Potassium. What's the role that potassium has in the body? The major role that potassium has is it uh, stimulates the nerves and conjunction and muscle activity. And all this is excreted from the kidneys. So if something's wrong with the kidneys, it's going to affect the potassium. Now, depending on what textbook you have, depends on the lab values. This one I found pretty universal. So it's potassium 3.5 to 5 milli equivalents per liter. Now with potassium, you have to watch for the potassium levels with digitalis, diuretics, and IV fluids. This potassium is found mainly in the intracellular fluid as opposed to sodium, which is mainly found in the extracellular fluid. So with potassium, you do have to watch out if you have too much potassium, so that would be over five, and what would cause too much potassium? One thing, if you're already taking potassium, you could be taking too much of it. You might be taking too much of the potassium supplements, which could cause hyperkalemia. Or, again, since it has to do with the kidneys, where it's excreted from, you might have renal problems. So those are the two th main things that could cause hyperkalemia. Now, some of the signs and symptoms. Uh, these are pretty basic. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Then you also have irritability, anxiety, abdominal cramps, weakness, dysrhythmias, which is irregular rhythm. And again, since this has to deal with the kidneys, if you have too much potassium, your urinary output from renal failure is going to decrease. So you'll be urinating less because of renal failure. You also have muscle twitching. And if you have too much potassium, your blood pressure will be low. And then there's also the flat P wave when you're doing the ECGs or EKGs. Now, the way you want to fix this or treat it is you want to see what's causing the excessive amount of potassium. If they're taking supplements, then, of course, you know, you want to advise them not to take it uh, or as often or, you know, follow the directions. You also want to monitor the, uh, the heart. Now, if you have too little potassium, which is hypokalemia, Kind of the same thing as far as symptoms. You're going to have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Another thing that causes hypokalemia is an NG tube suction, diuretic use, medical problems. So again, it's going to have to deal with the heart, respiratory, or muscular. So that's what causes the hypokalemia. Now, some of the signs and symptoms, again, nausea, vomiting, some muscle weakness, weak, thready pulse, decreased bowel sounds decreased intestinal motility, and again, that's why you have the decreased bowel sounds, decreased reflexes, and decreased muscle tone. If on digoxin, you want to monitor the pulse because low calcium levels can cause dig toxicity. Now, if it's too low, it could be life-threatening, or if it's too high, it could be life-threatening. So if it's the average is 3.5 to 5. So the if it's too low, it's going to be 2.5. If it's too high, it's 6.5. So potassium is really, really important to always check the levels. This was kind of like a brief overview of potassium, the hyper and hypokalemia. I'm going to make another video that's more in depth. It'll have a lot more information. If you found this helpful, uh, let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, of course, please like and Please subscribe. That way I know that my efforts are being appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching.